Hello, this is Mr. Hammond, and today our topic of discussion is solving systems of equations using graphs. Uh, as you're going to find out as you go throughout uh, the, the later sections, there are many different ways to solve systems of equations, um, and this is just one of the many. Now, in, in some cases, there are some good uh, and, and bad of, of each, so we're going to kind of go through uh, just using uh, graphing to solve systems of equations here. There are a couple ways that you can look at graphs when solving systems of equations. The first is you can make a table of values for the equation. So a table of values for x and y or whatever variables that are involved in the system of equations. The other item is we could use what's called slope-intercept form, which you should have learned uh, in previous sections. And then you can use that slope-intercept form to graph. And uh, in slope-intercept form, where M represents your slope and B represents your y-intercept. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at an example of a system of equations. So we have here y equals uh, 3x plus 4 and then y equals negative 2x minus 5 and I color coded them so that we can more easily I, I guess distinguish between the two as we go throughout uh, this problem. So our goal is to solve the following system of equations by using a graph and a table. So we're just going to look at, at graphing uh, using uh, the graph and a table in this case. So we're not going to actually use slope and intercept form. However, that is an option and uh, there will be a video following this to show that. All right, so if we look at um, y equals negative 2x minus 5, for example, what I'm going to do, make a, a table of values. Now, this table of values looks a little bit different. What I did is in the middle, I'm going to, I allowed some space so I can show my work. So on the left-hand side, you're going to see x values, and the right-hand side, you're going to see the y values. When you are plugging in values for x, you can plug in whatever you'd like. What I would recommend is make it easy on yourself. You don't want to plug in 100 or 200 or fractions or things that are going to make it difficult on you. You want to be accurate. I'd make it easy on yourself. 0 and 1 typically work in, in most cases. So when I plug in 0 to this equation, it's going to look something like this. So you have y equals negative 2. Replace the x with a 0 minus 5. And then solve for y. So negative 2 times 0 gives you 0. Minus 5 gives you negative 5. So the first set of coordinates I have is 0, negative 5. And then when I plug into 1, do the exact same thing. y equals negative 2 times 1 minus 5. That would give me negative 7. Now when you are graphing a line, you only need two points. Uh, if you think about when you plot two points in, in a coordinate plane, it only takes two to be able to draw a line through it to know exactly where that line is. So uh, then we look at our second equation. I'm kind of doing these backwards. We have y equals 3x plus 4. So again, make the table of values as we have here. And again, the center just shows my work. And that's all it's used to represent. Again, I'm going to use some numbers that are easy for me. So I'm going to use 0 and 1. And then when I plug in 0 to this particular equation, so the y equals 3 times 0 plus 4, gives me a 4. Plug in 1, y equals 3 times 1 plus 4, gives me 7. So my coordinates here are 0, 4, 1, 7. Then, let's go ahead and we'll jump to the next screen. And what I did is I, I consolidated the table of values for each. So I, I got rid of the work. And this is what the table of values would look like for each. y equals negative 2x minus 5. You'd have 0, 4, 1, 7. And then for y equals 3x plus 4, you'd have 0, negative 5, and 1, negative 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the points. The first one, 0, 4. 
And I, again, I color coded these so that um, we know which line is which. And then the one seven. And then I'm going to plot the other points. Now again, you could draw the line through those first, but I'm going to actually draw the line here in just a second. Plot those points, and you're going to see the lines appear on the page. And what we are looking for, in particular in this case, is we're looking for where they intersect, as you see here. Now that intersection point, in this case, is going to be somewhere, it looks like if you go back one, maybe one point, we'll say it's a little bit less than a half, so about 1.3 or 1.4, and we go down, this looks like about 2.2. Now you might be thinking, well, why so particular? Well, you really don't have to be in this case because you're graphing. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind with graphing is it's not going to be exact. And in many cases, it's, it's very hard to, or very difficult to find the exact answer because uh, you graphing and me graphing, we might come up with two very similar answers, but they're not going to be exactly the same. So graphing is a good uh, way to find a close estimate of an, an answer for systems of equations, but it's not, it's not the best way to find an exact answer. So an acceptable answer for this case, like if you were doing this on an assignment, you could just say uh, negative 1, negative 2 would be an acceptable answer because that is very close to what we have here. So uh, it's the solution to this, we could say the solution is negative 1, negative 2. And that would be an acceptable answer for this problem. If you have any other questions about solving systems of equations using uh, the tables, uh, please feel free to let me know. Have a great day.